All right, drinking while recording. I said I was not going to be doing it, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm right along with you as well, like twinsies. <laughs> we, we both know it was lies. <laughs> I haven't been <laughs> drinking the last few episodes, and I'm like, well, I better join in on the fun. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it was important that you did. And with that, <laughs> uh, a warm welcome to everybody to the show. For better or worse, I guess, um, you found your way to Wednesday Up Late. <laughs> My name's Glenn. I'm Chloe. And uh, stick around for the next 45 minutes or so as we just ramble on about movies and, and play some silly movie games and, and um, yeah, end up looking like dickheads. As per usual. As per usual. <laughs> so as per usual. If, if you're listening to us as a podcast, um, as opposed to a vodcast, then please consider uh, listening to us on the Newsly app if you don't already. It's a super app and uh, they support what we do here, so please let's support them back. Um, what is there to say about it? It's a place where you get all of your podcasts from, as well as your daily news. Uh, Newsly helps you find the highest trending articles from around the world, over 80 different countries it plucks from, and puts them all into the palm of your hand. And um, better than yet, they, they have a premium service, so if you want to access that, otherwise the, the app is free, but if you do want to access the premium, you can do so with a special code. It's our it's our show title, Chloe. It's just Wednesday Up Late. If you uh, use that code when you go to newsly.me, uh, you can get yourself a free month of premium. And uh, there you go. That's free a... for free. How good is that? Oh, free for free. Free for free. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Chloe? Like, give us a recap of your week. How was your long weekend? It was busy, full of chocolate, full of meltdowns. You know how it is with kids and eating chocolate for breakfast. It ended so well. Um, <laughs> how was yours? <laughs> Mine was good. I've uh, had a good start of the weekend. Um, the end of the weekend, I was sort of home alone for two days. So that, you know. Worked out quite nicely. Um, did anyone try to break into your house and did you set any booty traps for them? Is, is that where this episode is going? Oh, I'm sorry. I had to take the chance while I found it. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Let's move on. Moving on. Moving it. on. <laughs> um, I did, over the last week, I did um, catch quite a few screenings in the city. Ah, um, oh, did you? I saw the, the new... Ben Affleck directed film Air. The new yeah, about, I've heard good things. All about Nike's um, headhunt of Michael Jordan. That's a fantastic film. It's it's top five of the year for me. Yeah, uh, I've heard else? I've heard really good things. I saw The Pope's Exorcist, which is one of those ones that I was really trying to get you to come along to, just because I, I didn't <laughs> want to do it on my own. Uh, it was a steaming pile of shit. It was terrible. And <laughs> poor, I saw I saw rusty. Mafia Mama, the new uh, Tony Collette one, where she's like the 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 bubbly. American mum that inherits the uh, the entire mafia, essentially, or one family oh. of the mafia in Italy. Um, went into this one, very low expectations, because the trailer is awful. And I'll tell mm-hmm. you what, it's really good. It's really good, It's isn't really it? good. Like, it's surprisingly <laughs> good. And I walked out of that, took my wife to that one, and I walked out saying, like, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, <laughs> I almost wanted to not like it, but I really liked it. Completely <laughs> caught you off guard. They're kind, of, they're kind of the best ones. I like that. Yeah. So, I look, I recommend getting along to that one. You'll love it. I know you'll love it. Awesome. Yeah. That sounds really good. Um, few things that I saw. Hmm. Um, the Barbie trailer dropped. Yes, it did. Um, I have not a lot to say about it other than the fact that it is pink, it's colourful, and then and. From the trailer alone, I think it's everything a Barbie movie should be, Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm so excited for it. Yeah, no, it looks very fun. Um, I'll I'll be interested to to see more and talk about it a little bit more. Like, yes, I'm very excited about it. I'm very curious about them making this much more of a mature movie in terms of the themes and the content, um, which I'm all for. I'm all for. But will they make that apparent to parents that might want to be taking their kids to see it is the question. I kind of feel like Greta is targeting towards the audience like me. So yeah, she's, she's definitely kids going who for the really adults. did grow up with Barbie um, she, opposed to these days. But like I'm getting the sense it's going to be very similar to the Brady Bunch movie where, you know, the TV show was a <laughs> yeah. very, very wholesome, family-friendly entertainment. And the movie itself, if we're sort of contextualizing it with the time it was made, was quite edgy and taboo and and quite racy in many ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, still, in today's standards, very family friendly. But you know what I mean. Like I'm, th- I'm feeling Barbie's the going undertones. for much, much more of a, a an adult orientated audience. But I'm look, I'm keen for it. Yeah, I'm keen for it too. From from the trailer itself, I think Greta's doing a really good job. So I'm I'm pumped. Awesome. Should we should we play some games? 
<laughs> yes, please. All right. So that's what we do. If you're new to the show, we just um we just play games. We just give each other what movie propositions we are, uh, mm-hmm. you know, would you rather's, all that kind of stuff. And we're going to kick yep. off with one called movie quotes. And it's as simple as that. We're going to give quotes from movies and the other person's got to guess what movie it might be from. I have a feeling you're going to make this difficult on me. <laughs> I don't I, know I, why. I feel like I've made this easy on you. Maybe one might be a little tricky, but okay. we'll, we'll find out in a moment. Do you want to take it away? Yeah. Can I, can I go first? Yeah. That's what it means when I say, do you want to take it away? <laughs> um, all right. So I'm going to start off with this one and you're probably going to know it, by the way. All right. It is. How about I just go eat some hay? Maybe I can make things out of clay, lay by the bay. I may. What do you say? I say happy Gilmore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one of my favorite parts of that movie. I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast. <laughs> it's just I think, so good. I think on my original TikTok account, like my personal one, I I used to do lots of um movie um reenactments. Uh-huh. I think that's one of them. Yeah, it's a classic. Yep, it's yep. a total classic. I love it. What about you can't handle the truth? I know exactly what this movie is. Do you think I know what the fucking name of it is? <laughs> it is. <sighs> it Who is. Might Who might be in it? Uh, Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. Tom Cruise. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um. True lies keep coming to my head, but it's not. I, I obviously know it's not true lies. I feel like I feel like giving it to you because you you know the movie. It's clear. That I you know, know the movie. movie. It's a few just, good men. Few good men. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Directed by uh, Robert Rob Reiner. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Let's just um, learn something new every day. Might need to Google and fact check that because I'm just going off the top of my brain, but I'm pretty confident that it's Rob Reiner. <laughs> I believe you, <laughs> yeah, whether you're right. wrong or right. We're going to just right. go with that. Okay. All right. Let's get some of that Saturday night fever. That was the quote? Yep. <laughs> it's not Saturday night fever. No. Let's get some of that Saturday night fever. I don't know that quote. Mm-mm. Beaver. Let's get some of that Saturday night beaver. Fuck me. Like I just... I don't know. We were back on the drink, everybody. <laughs> Taxi. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, it's not American Pie. Mm-mm. El- uh, earlier. Is it Bachelor Party? No. Animal Think House. Think Marky Mark. Oh, Marky Mark. Um, like one of his early ones. Early. Like, not Basketball Diaries? No. Saturday Night Beaver. Yeah, I don't fucking know what it is. Think discos and porn. Oh, boogie nice. Fuck me yeah. dead. <laughs> I pledged last week I wouldn't drink again on the show and look at me. like Just makes it all the more fun for me, Glenn. It's no, great. I need the drink to, <laughs> as an excuse for why I don't get them right. Yeah. <laughs> it's all fading away. That was embarrassing, that one. I should have known that. It's all about the Dirk, the Dirk Diggler. That's it. I'll have what she's having. Oh. Everything is escaping me at the moment. Uh, When Harry met Sally. Yes. Which I believe, if my memory serves me, Rob Reiner was in. Oh, really? Yes. I don't think I've ever seen that movie, but obviously I've seen that scene. It is Um, It's very famous. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. According to a lot of people. (laughs) Uh, All right. He's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. Now go away. Life of Brian. Yeah. Yeah, that that was an easy one. I'm thankful for that. Thank you. (laughs) Redeemed. Redeemed. And it's a fantastic line. Fantastic line. Fantastic movie. Yeah, and talk about a movie that was so misunderstood when it came out. Like, there's a whole controversy around it. It's well worth looking into. Fantastic videos of Monty Python defending themselves with the church coming at them and all that kind of stuff. But really, how drastically the church misunderstood, or or the parts of the church misunderstood this movie, thinking that they're coming out at saying it was blasphemous and all this, and (laughs) and the Pythons were trying to say 
this is not a movie about Jesus. This is about the other guy. Yeah. This is about his neighbor. <laughs> this is about another guy that's at the back of the crowd, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so therefore it's it's got nothing to do with the Bible, it's really. Got it's it's, to it's do just with it, about yeah. it's it's about Brian. It's not about Jesus. You know, if, if we if we made a movie about it's Jesus in can, the title. <laughs> that's right. Then you can come after us. Anyway, there's this glorious, um glorious live debate on television around the time it came out that you can watch with John Cleese and Michael Palin going up against these two archbishops and it is sensational. It goes for about an hour. Michael Palin getting so angry. Like angry in that he's frustrated, right? He's mm-hmm. frustrated that these people are not understanding the point of this film, right? Meanwhile, John Cleese, classic uh, a classic shit stirrer. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> That's good for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Classic shit stirrer is loving every moment of it. So he's sitting mm-hmm. back with his, his legs across and he's enjoying the the spectacle and he's he's prodding them even more. But Michael Palin's really taking it personally. It is great. They even made a whole movie about that one debate. So Really? Yeah, yeah. It's really That's good. hilarious. Anyway. You I'm got so me on a, that you up. got me on a roll there. Okay, so. Did. There's no crying in baseball. Oh, a league of their own. Yep. Such a good movie. I just rewatched that quite recently. Actually. Apologies to the ear holes I might have blown out just then. <laughs> no, it was good. I like the delivery of it. <laughs> uh, leave the gun, take the cannoli. Yeah, leave the gun, take the cannoli. Oh, fuck. oh should I? Should I? Leave the gun, take the cannoli. Yeah, that I'm was thinking, probably really offensive I, to a lot of people. <laughs> I instantly no, it's not offensive to do Italian accents. It's been proven time and again. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um. <laughs> oh, it's not Godfather. It's um. It's a leave. Take the cannoli. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Oh, it, I've gone. It, I can see is, the scene. It is, is the the Godfather. Godfather. Yes. yes. <laughs> I could be dead. I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> I, I need to watch the video back. Then. I need to watch the video back because when I said it's the Godfather, it's not the Godfather. You shook your head, like, like no, I was yeah. like, yeah, it is. I have a podcast, everyone. <laughs> 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 like, I, I need to do better <laughs> at it. <laughs> oh my lord! Yeah, that was a good one. I knew most of those. I've still got one to go. Do ya? Yep. Go for it. Hang on. One, two, three. Yeah, I still got one more because you went first. <laughs> okay. I need to quickly read this one before I do it. I don't want to get it wrong. Oh, oh dear. We're serious here. There's no way on earth we're getting out of here tonight. We'd have more luck playing pickup sticks with our butt cheeks than we will getting a flight out of here before daybreak. Wow. I have no clue. Let me shorten it. We'd have more luck playing pickup sticks with our butt cheeks. Uh, airplane? That's the one I told you that you'd, you'd probably struggle with. Yeah. You Planes, were trains, right. and automobiles. Ah, oh, you know how long it's been since I've seen that movie? I really wanted to channel some uh, some Dell Griffin, uh, John Candy <laughs> glory there, but I'm, I'm not even going to try. You should have given it a go. Could be one uh, of your impressions from the from the segment that failed miserably. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> it terrible. was. I can't even watch those episodes back. Anyway. That's all anyway. Right. Yeah. I'm embarrassed um, by all of it. The Indiana Jones trailer that dropped. Yeah. Is that new or is that a second trailer? That's no, the second trailer dropped on Good Friday. Yes. Okay, cool. So I've seen that trailer. I don't think I've seen the first one. Oh, don't so... even bother with the first trailer. This right. one is stunning. It is so fun. Yep. So um, it, like, it looks really it's... good. Yep. And Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Everything about it. Like, yeah, you can you can fangirl over that if you want. That's fine. I will. Like, I'm just going to fanboy over just Harrison Ford, like mm-hmm. 80 years old, doing an Indiana Jones movie that if the trailer is any indication, is as glorious as the original Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is a fantastic trailer that just takes us right back to that 80s Spielberg magic, right? And um, I felt that. I felt yeah. that through the trailer. I got the goosebumps when I heard the... Dun, 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 yep. dun. I got the goosebumps. Very clever trailer too because they. I think it's... um they. 
it's Paint It Black, I think, by the Rolling Stones is the song that they play through most of it. Yeah, okay. And then it's only till like halfway through the trailer that you actually hear the Indiana theme. Exactly. Right? Yep. So they really build it up. Um, yeah, I just look, the story looks fantastic. I was reading that it's going to be the longest installment of an Indiana Jones uh, series, of the Indiana Jones series, which is fine by me. It's um, it's the kind of thing when I read that, like this is going to be the longest one, I thought, fantastic. Because whenever mm-hmm. I'm watching Indiana Jones, it can never be long enough. Like I just want yeah. more and more and more. Yeah. More um, adventure. I on love the same, it. On the same um, event, it was that was actually released to the public at the Star Wars celebration event in London on Good Friday. It's a it's a Star Wars con that went across the whole long weekend. And they dropped a bunch of Star Wars news. I don't know if you saw all of that. Uh, not as exciting to me, but I know the world's blowing up at the moment over it. Um, is it just more more movies? Well they've and... announced Yeah, they've announced um nine official new titles. Three of those are going to be movies. And the other are going to be television. Uh, one of the movies is James Mangold directing, who's done the new Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. So he's in charge. And his story apparently is going to go back long before any of the Star Wars. It's going to be the earliest prequel. And wow. it's all going to be about how the Force actually came to be something. Wow. And okay. he said he's going to make it like a Ten Commandments style of biblical film, but a biblical in the Star Wars sense, like Jedi and all that. Right? So okay. It's going to be a, I can, get, I can, I can yeah. hear that. Yeah. The other one is going to be... A movie apparently that just ties all of the loose ends together from the various TV shows that have been sort of cancelled, right? Okay, okay. So I guess if you haven't seen those TV shows, then you might get a little bit lost in it. Yeah. I've seen then, probably two episodes of The Mandalorian and then I'm that's that's about me capped. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm not a fan of any of them. And the third one I is, oh, Ray's coming back from, you know, the previous. Yeah, trilogy. that's what I was hearing. And this takes place 15 years after Rise of the Skywalker and it's all about her sort of, you know building an empire back up or something like that yeah wow okay oh, well i'll be excited for the first one definitely and then we'll have to see how the rest goes to be- yeah look i don't new really... titles that's a lot man yeah but the, and that's frustrating too because at one point a couple of years ago they actually said they're going to wind it back and not over yeah and oversaturate the the star wars market but whatever fans are excited and Fans really? love it, but then I I get a little bit like they're saturating the franchise as well and just kind of, I don't know, to me it feels like it might take away a little bit of the specialness of the original. It dilutes yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. Anyway. That's just my opinion go. anyway. What's the next game we've got going? Um, well, we have both had different names for this, <laughs> this, <laughs> this segment because, you know, we wouldn't be us if we didn't get our lines crossed here. Um, you have dubbed it Filmathon. Yep. And I dubbed it curated movies for some reason. Which was my subtitle. That was my description. Was no, oh, bio- that was your description. That was okay, the byline. Right. So Filmathon, um, if you've ever, uh, if you're from my generation, cinemas used to do you know, movie marathons. They were lock-in sessions at the cinemas. You'd go in at like 10 o'clock at night. They'd lock you in there and you'd come out at like 8 o'clock in the morning and you'd watch four movies back to back. You took sleeping bags, you took pillows, like jamas. Like you just, yeah, it was fun. And so we're going to recapture some of that spirit by curating some movie marathons, filmathons. So, filmathons. I love this idea, by the way. Yeah. And I, they should bring these back. They should. I don't think they could with the way that the youth are today. The youths. So disrespectful. Uh, so, how many movies per filmathon have you got here? Four. Four movies. And we decided three, didn't we? Three filmathons? Um, I think we decided two, but I actually did three. Okay, bingo, bango. So did you do three? <laughs> there you go. I couldn't, <laughs> I, like I had a really hard time capping it and trying to keep all the films towards a certain theme. But I think yep. the themes that I kept with were, if I was to sit down and watch this movie, what are three other movies that I would like to watch consecutively with this? Yeah. So that it's based on my personal opinion, not what other people might think would mesh well together. There's no rules here. There's no rules. As as Ben and I used to always say on the podcast, we, we talk about movie marathons every now and then, and it's always we remember them, and it's like you get, you get like three bangers, three great films, and then like a really shit one that they've tacked on just to get, you know, some screen time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, let's do it. Um, You can go first again. I'll go first. Okay, yeah. so these these were the first ones that came to my mind. If I was to go to a filmathon with Mum, yep, um, and we could curate any sort of um, it's a Richie girls, it's a Richie girls a rich, marathon. This would be a Richie girls marathon. This is what I would choose. So first up, we'd be watching the Breakfast Club. 
Good would be starting off strong. Second would be Stand By Me. Of course. To get that adventure in there. Mm-hmm. Some little heartwarming Stephen King, Rob Reiner f- magic. <laughs> yeah. Next, we would go to the illustrious, wonderful, hilarious comedy, The Princess Bride. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's another little <laughs> callback. I like it. <laughs> and we'd finish off strong with Dirty Dancing because uh, one of my earliest memories of my mum having a girl's sleepover with all of her girlfriends, they were in the living room watching Dirty Dancing. And I wanted to just watch it with them so badly. I was a little young at that point mm-hmm. and they were having a wonderful girls night. So I wasn't allowed. But when I was finally allowed into that sort of inner circle, it was dirty dancing and it just felt so special. So we would end on dirty dancing. Fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of dirty dancing buzz at the moment because there is the uh, the new keepsake edition via vision or releasing on uh, DVD and Blu-ray or whatever, 4K. Wow. Um, and, and of course, we've got a, a sequel, legacy movie sequel coming up. Um all about oh really yeah baby goes back to the cat skills i believe and it's it's the natural course of time so what 30 years later uh so it's like a, a new generation experience oh. in what they experienced but i think um they're bringing old characters back and yeah well i you'll like this a sequel that i actually loved so much was the dirty dancing havana, havana nights, nights. I yeah fucking love that sequel you and i are part of a very very small minority Love it. Yep. Good. And it's not just because of Diego Luna, but it's a lot because of <laughs> yeah. Diego Luna. Yep. Yep. No, I do enjoy that one too. All right. So my first filmathon. Show me. Uh, okay. So I'm going to kick things off with Natural Born Killers. Uh huh. Right. Yep. It's the Oliver Stone movie that Quentin Tarantino wrote and sort of disowned. Uh, he was wrong to do so. I think it's a it's an incredible film. It's a five star mm-hmm. film. Mm-hmm. Then California with Brad Pitt and David Duchovny and Juliette Lewis. Okay. So that was yeah, released I'll around about you. the same time. It's um it was it's a it's a spree kill kind of movie. It's about serial killers on the road with two unsuspecting uh hosts that are driving them that don't mm-hmm. know that they're serial killers and they're they're going around to various murder sites around the country taking photographs. It's a photographer, husband and wife, and to split the I've cost of getting heard get, of this. To split the cost of getting across the country, they take on two strangers who are gonna, you know, split the petrol money. And join them on this cross country tour. And the two guests, which are Brad Pitt and Juliette Lewis, are serial killers. Wow. So that sounds good. It's a good movie. Uh, and the next one I'll do is called The Honeymoon Killers, which is a movie from the 1960s. Uh, also a spree kill movie. It's a true story about the honeymoon killers that um, went across America and just killed a whole lot of people. It's a black and white film. It's really really edgy and hardcore for its time i think it had an x rating back in the day when wow. in america an x rating meant like just it's more than an r mm-hmm. and that meant limited screenings and things like that it wasn't the x that we know as porno or anything like that right yeah and then i would cap it all off with badlands the terence malick film with um martin sheen uh sissy spacek which spree kill movie and it's one of the best one of wow. the best. If you've ever seen True Romance, the Quentin Tarantino written film, all of the music all the way through that movie is the music from Badlands. And so when wow. I watch Badlands now, I've got sort of a bit of Tarantino in my head. And uh-huh. yeah. So it's, it's a spree, wrong it's with a that. spree kill film of Nice. I like it. Different. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Very nice. All right. So my second film of um, goes to like a little dark place in my brain where awesome. I like sci-fi and action and all that stuff. Um, so obviously we would start off with Terminator 2 because <laughs> you don't start off with Terminator. You always start with Terminator 2. That's just how I see it anyway. Um, there is nothing like Eddie Furlong in that movie and Arnold Schwarzenegger. It is like they are made for each other in that movie and I just – Love it. Um, second would be Saving Private Ryan because mm-hmm. you've got to get a little bit of heart in there. You've got to have some gore, a lot of gore. Again, in my top five favourite movies of all time, you know this, so I just love it. And then you've got to get some fun and some humour in there. you got to get a little bit of fun. So you chuck in the fifth element there. You get some, <laughs> you get some Bruce. <laughs> yeah. You get a little bit of Sexy Miller, Chris Tucker. <laughs> 
It's all good, baby. Your, it's your all good. Your film thons are all over the place. Oh, it's all over the shop. This this is how I would watch it. And then to cap it all off, right? Because they all three of those are really long movies. They're mm-hmm. long. They're gory. They're hard. They can be a bit hardcore. So you got to finish off with something light that's going to make you uh, zone out and just chill. So I would end on Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say to the people listening that can't see my reaction, but, you know. I think they would agree with me. That is a good movie to end on. I think, to be honest with you, I don't. Have you seen those clips Mm -hmm. of people in the cinemas when Twilight is replaying? Oh, yeah. People freaking... People I'm, love that movie, a, Glenn. I am telling yeah, you now. That's not. That's got nothing to do with it. I'm a creature of logic, right? And so I feel like you've gone bang, 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 action, 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 and then let's just slow it down. People are tired by this point. They, you know, they, they kind of the third film. They, they need something that's going to pep them up. Twilight's not going to do that. I think you would be surprised. And again, like I said, I, this is based on what I feel like I would like in I know. order. I also think that people that love Twilight are probably not going to be on board for Terminator 2 and, you know. Disagree. Ryan. Disagree. No. I'm talking, you've got to like, we've got to be logical here. Not We're not talking about you. We're talking about the audience, the general audience. They've got different demographics. TikTok. I'm speaking to you <laughs> now. Okay. If you were to watch Terminator 2, Saving Private Ryan, and The Fifth Element all in one shot and finish off with Twilight, that's a good fucking filmathon. Tell me no. Tell me no, and I will admit defeat. If TikTok tells me no, I'll agree with you. But okay. I can think I just ask that's you one question? Sure. How do you think that's going to go? I reckon I'm going to win. I've got a, st- I've got a really strong feeling about this. I think those are quite popular movies that. I think I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We will see. Let's make a note to circle back to that next week. I'm going to, yeah, we'll circle back. We will. All right. Cool. All right. My next film a thon is Gremlins. Oh, yes. Followed by The Gate, which is a fantastic movie from the mid 80s with Stephen Dorff when he was a little boy. And it's all about teen, uh, not the pre teens. I reckon they're about 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. And they find the gateway to hell in their backyard and all these Ooh. tiny little. Like tiny little miniature demons crawl out. They're like little figurines and they're clay animation and it's so fun. It's just a really fun kids horror movie. So I would go Gremlins, The Gate. Then I'd go a movie called Munchies, which is um <laughs> it's 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 a take on Gremlins. It's sort of back in those days there was a whole lot of movies that were trying to tap into what Gremlins did. And most of them to a lesser effect. Uh, Munchies is one of those cheaper ones, but it's still fun. And then mm-hmm. I'd end it. I'd end it with Critters, and Critters is just an exciting, fun science fiction horror film that's suitable for that you know PG thirteen audience. You know, any anywhere, I guess as as young as ten can enjoy it. You know, be a little bit scary for the younger ones, but it's just so much fun. Critters, the word gives me the heebie-jeebies. You I know, know. Like... it's about these tiny little furballs from space and. They 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 crash land on Earth and run amok eating animals and people and and it's but it's so much fun because they roll they're little furballs that roll and they have their own oh. little language and uh, Billy Zane is in it and uh, directed I love by Stephen Billy Herrick. Zane yeah it's just so good anyway there we go so that's my little creature feature movie filmathon I like it I think that would be very fun all right my third and final one does have a theme okay it has a theme it <laughs> follows a set of rules. All right, I'll fit within your box. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Ooh, let's uh blow past that. All right, so my third one would. <laughs> you can't say things like that while I'm in front of this. All right, it's a musical <laughs> movie filmathon. Okay. All right, you knew this was coming. I would start off with Reefer Madness. Mm-hmm. And the reason I would start off with that is because not a whole lot of people have seen it and it's super fun and it's super funny and I think a lot of people need to see it. So we'd start off with that. Okay. We'd then move on to the producers because we all need a little Broderick and Lane in our lives. Okay, so remake and musical Remake, producers. remake, yes. I do prefer that one. I know it's tacky, but I love it. We'd then move to Little Shop of Horrors. Okay. Uh, 
No explanation needed for that. And uh, we'd end on Tenacious D, the movie, because... The pick of destiny. The pick of destiny, exactly. Um, Which I have every single song memorized. So... (laughs) And you wanted to end on a little bit of pizzazz. That's very pizzazzy, that movie. That's very pizzazzy. (laughs) (laughs) That's a really good one. All righty. So good one. That is a good one, yeah. (laughs) All right. <laughs> the next one, my final one, is another road trip movie, but of a different kind. So I'm going to start off with Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh. Because it is just a barrel of fun. It's mm-hmm. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I love it. Um, I know you feeling like I sh- I'm feeling like I should be doing some impressions now, but I can't come up with anything that fits. So my keep next going. one would be Sesame Street's Follow That Bird. It's, okay. It's my favorite Muppet movie because it's it's technically a Muppet movie. It's the '80s cast of Sesame Street in their mm-hmm. first theatrical film, and this was at all the cinemas. And Big Bird feels like he's not at home anymore because he's different to everybody. He's a bird, and no one else is a bird. So he runs away from Sesame Street with the suitcase, looking for another Aww. family, and he finds a bird family. He's adopted to another bird family, but he then uh, he gets kidnapped into a circus and turned blue and he becomes bluebird and it's um and then everyone from sesame street who misses big bird gets together on a big rescue mission so it's everyone from sesame street humans and muppets alike all trying to find big bird and it's just wonderful and it's loaded with celebrities so you got chevy chase in there uh, you got john candy like you know you got all these snl type oh, of people oh wow it's so good and it's the movie that my mum threatened me with when i was young because we go to the video store Every time, follow that bird. Every time, that's what I'd rent. And mum, it got to the point where she was so sick of it. She's like, <laughs> you've got a choice, Glenn. Think about this. You can rent follow that bird today and never rent anything else for the rest of your life. Like, this is the last <laughs> rental you will ever have. Or you can pick another movie and we can just come back every week and pick other movies. So... What did I you pick, do? Follow that bird. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can smell bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you had it picked. You had it. So I had, yeah. So uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Follow That Bird. Then I'd go with Bubble Boy, the movie with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. I love that movie. <laughs> it was a, so sweet. It was a recommendation on a recent episode of Good Movie Monday that I did. Um, and I do love it too. It's fun. And I compared it to Pee Wee's Big Adventure because it's practically the same story, just mm-hmm. different, you know, lead character. And then I'd end it with The Wizard, which is a movie from the late 80s with Christian Slater, Fred Savage, Bo Bridges, all about an autistic boy that, kind of runs away from home to enter a Nintendo tournament. Ooh. So the whole movie was essentially a promo by Nintendo to promote the release of Mario 3 okay. as well as the release of the Power Glove. And so oh. they fashioned this fantastic story. It's a road movie of this little boy, he's autistic, just on the road with his older brother to to this nin- this sort of fabled Nintendo convention in LA. And then it's the dad and the older brother that are in pursuit to try and catch up to them. Wow. That's a good, you would love it. That sounds really nice. And every kid that Nintendo. saw that movie. And the thing is, like, Nintendo, they, they premiered both the, the Power Glove and, and Mario 3 in the movie. So we saw glimpses of these things before they became a product on the market. Wow. And every kid wanted that Power Glove. I was going to say, that would have been huge. It was as defective as fuck. It didn't work, but, you know, anyway. <laughs> There we Not go. The point. So they still sold them. That was Filmathon. You want to take us out to uh with a little song? About to say that song has no sound. And then <laughs> <laughs> it beats the purpose. Uh hey, and speaking of music and Jack Black and all that kind of stuff, did you read about School of Rock this week? No. Uh, he was in conversation, probably promoting Mario Brothers of all things. Uh, yeah, the new movie's out, and he plays Bowser. Bowser suit. I saw it. Yeah, yep. it's um, and and it's a good movie. I've got to say, but um, he said there's going to be a School of Rock reunion coming up. Oh, I don't, it's probably going to be like the Harry Potter one where they just it's a live stream or something like that. But then he goes, and you know, it's been talked about for a long time. But he's like, he's very very serious about doing a second film. It's one of those movies that when you see it on the television, you mm. stop and you watch it. You, you can't scroll past the School of Rock. It is classic. It is heartwarming. It's just, it's hilarious. You cannot, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're like not he just, hardcore. 
The legend of the red was the way red back the red was way back the Oh, far out. It's a great so movie. Good. It's a really great movie. Uh, I'm up for a, a sequel. Um, if he's up for it, I'm up for it. It'll be a new generation of students or something along those lines. Uh, it's got to be better than the TV well, show. He, was. That in, was fucking awful. In the end of the movie, they opened up like a music school. So mm. I would hope that they would do something with that. Schneebly. Mm, Schneebly. <laughs> hey, let's do some quick fire. Let's do it. Quick fire. So this the is the quickest game. of the fire. All right, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the quickest of the fire on this episode. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so we just um we we name an actor, a director, a personality, and the other person then has to just as fast as they can uh, name three titles that come to mind. First three or four, sorry, four titles that come to mind, and um not necessarily their actual best, just the first that come to your mm-hmm. head. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go first. I was going to say, you take the lead on this one. It's kind of topical to this episode, but let's go with Patrick Swayze. <gasps> oh, Daddy Dancing, Ghost, Roadhouse. Stop stalling, Schneebly. I can't give a fourth. I can't think. Those Tony are my top Darker. three. Donny Darko, yes, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. North and South, really good too. Technically what a not a movie. Re- but... Point Break, Point Break. Yeah. Oh, yeah. totally. That put that in there. Um, he's a creep in Donny Darko, kind of like he's yeah, he's an evangelist, he's... isn't he? He's like a televangelist. Yeah, or motivational speaker. Like, um, Justin Long in Barbarian, <laughs> yeah. because I love Patrick Swayze so much. To see him play a character like that really threw me off. Yeah, really, no. really threw me off. I, uh, I did a bit of a, a deep dive into Patrick Swayze's uh, filmography a couple of weeks ago for work and put it together like a listicle. And um, I was just reminded of how dense and diverse his, his body of work was. Like he's done so many good things. I was a big fan of, like I said a moment ago, the three North and South uh, miniseries that he did were just fantastic. Um, you can go right back to Red Dawn and you know, just so many. Oh, Red Dawn. Yes. So yeah. many. Anyway, all right, so there we go. So your turn. All right, my first one, Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn, ugh, okay. So I would go cell, Brawl in Cell Block uh, 99. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would probably go Dragged Across Concrete and I would also go, for your sake, Dodgeball, and <laughs> then I would probably go with Old School. Oh, old school. That's such a good one. Old school. That is fantastic. a really good one. Yeah. Um, We're uh, going striking. Oh. I got a lot of time for Vince Vaughn, but like I, I am warm and, and cold with him as well. Like, you know, but I think when he did stuff like Brawl in Cell Block 99, that is just next level. Like, that is unlike anything any actor's ever done. That's just incredible. He's one of those, he's one of those weird ones where you have to take a minute to see whether or not he is trying to be humorous or he is yeah. trying to like actually do a monologue. But the yeah. thing is, the way that he he can diversify that. To swing both ways as well. I think he's a genius in my personal opinion. <laughs> um, and I just love him so much. Awesome. Well, add, I think add add that one to your list because you'll you'll just be mesmerized and shocked at the same time. I love it. I want to yep. be mesmerized yep. and shocked. Yep. There we go. Next one. Yep. Okay. Bill Murray. Oh, stripes. Yep. Ghostbusters. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, not Groundhog Day. I fucking hate that movie. Um. <laughs> Keep going. What are you what are you pointing at? An old poster on my wall that you can't see. Oh, I, can, I was gonna say I can't see anything. Um uh I'm just gonna say Zombie Land because that's the first one that's coming to mind. <laughs> um, but there's another one that I used to watch as a kid and now I can't remember it. No, it's gonna have to go with a three. I'm getting to three and then I'm stalling. What about meeples? Come on. No, I don't think I've seen that. Oh, that's the one I was pointing to. Meeples. Oh no, I don't Ivan think I've Reitman. seen that one. Genius. Yep. Anyway. No. Okay. Well, that was a bit of a disappointment. Sorry. <laughs> you could have just got Ghostbusters 2, 3. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. I choose to be difficult. Fair enough. Or like uh, Lost in Translation or Broken Flowers, something like that. Haven't seen either. Okay. <laughs> Next one then. Next one. All right. Uh, Will Ferrell. 
Will Ferrell. Oh my goodness. Okay, Night at the Roxbury. Yes. Uh, Austin Powers. That just came to my mind. I don't know why it's not one I would pick uh, ordinarily. He's only in it for like five minutes. Too. I know, but the image of him came to my mind. Yeah, superstar. Okay, yes. Once again, he's like bit characters in these. Yeah, totally. Sorry. Once again, you're great for a podcast. <laughs> You're great for a podcast. All of this works so well for a podcast. It just means I'll have to find us on both platforms, Glenn. I'm I'm staring at you. And injury. Everything Has to Go would be another one. Which okay. Is a, like a bit of a drama that he did. But they're not movies. If, if you if we were having a conversation over a drink um, and I didn't have to just bang them out really quick, they are not any of those are none that would come to mind initially. Like yeah, I would, completely fair. I would thoroughly That's think it out. Game. Yeah. Um, I mean, Step Brothers, come on. Like. Oh, love it. He's just done <laughs> so many good ones. Um, all right, you go. Natalie Portman. Shut the fuck up. You've got that too? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's both go. Right, we're both going to do it. Okay. Um, Vox Lux. Is it, um, what's the one Lux where she's one. the kid Kid prostitute? <laughs> is she a kid prostitute? You talk about um, Leon? No. Well, that's my other one. And then I would also go Beautiful Girls. So there's my four. Maybe it's Beautiful Girls I'm thinking of. Girl Interrupted? No, that's Angelina Jolie. No. <laughs> I was going to say Black Swan, but I wasn't, I wasn't counting on being Natalie Portman. All of yours are really good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Leon's exceptional. The professional. Just uh, Marvel. That was her first movie. Just the best. Just the best. Okay. So who goes next? Uh, me. <laughs> right. <laughs> then do it. Betty White. Betty White. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. So then the proposal, Lake yes. Placid. Um. Isn't that a Sandra uh, Bullock movie too? No, Lake Placid is not. That's a Bill Pullman, J. R. Um, Bridget Fonda movie. Oh, I'm thinking of the Lake House. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of any others that she's been in because she's more of a television actress. Yeah. Uh, so She's everywhere say, and she's nowhere. <laughs> let's, just, let's just say I'm going to say Golden Girls Series 1 and Series 2. <laughs> I'll, I'll count that. <laughs> or Golden Palace, the, uh, the sequel series that lasted for one season. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't even know that. Yeah, they left, uh, they left their house and um, Dorothy went and got married, moved away. So she's only in it for one episode and the three others opened a hotel. So it's kind of like Golden Girls meets Faulty Towers. Oh. oh. And Don no. Cheadle played like their, their concierge. Oh, God. I know. It was just, it was diabolical. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Lord. Do you have one more? Yep. Julia Roberts. Oh, uh, Mystic Pizza. Wow. <laughs> um, er, um, yep. Do it. I haven't seen all of Aaron Brockovich. I haven't seen all of it, but I'm going to say Aaron Brockovich. Um, uh, Pretty Woman. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, <laughs> she's been in everything and nothing. My Best Friend's Wedding? Yes. With Rupert Everett. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> you got there in the end. Oh, God, oh, she's work. gorgeous. She's hard gorgeous. Work. You reckon? Yep. I think she's stunning. Cool. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Time to wrap I'm it up. Very talented as well. I'm very talented. I reckon we've uh, we've outstayed our welcome, most likely. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> no, no. Both of us. Both of us. <laughs> it's always fun, Chloe. We're going to have to do this again next week, I reckon. <laughs> Oh, really? I'll have to check my schedule. <laughs> uh, thank you to everybody for watching and getting at least, you know, uh, um, if you're watching, you got this far. Like, that's amazing. Good on you. I know. It can be takes hard a, to listen to. <laughs> takes a lot of work. <laughs> um, hit us up on our social medias. Go to our website, goodmoviemonday.com. There's an up late tab. That'll take you to all of our platforms. Um, and follow us on TikTok particularly because... Uh, that's where all the fun stuff is. Like, you know, we, we take out all that shit in between and just put yep. the good stuff there. Put the good and stuff. You can find a, a, a special group on Facebook as well. Just look for Wednesday Up Late and, and chuck us an invite, you know, invite tab and we'll let you in. And it's a little exclusive club that we have and you can recommend suggestions for the show and we might take them on board. But um, All the cool kids are there. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's pack it up. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Chin chin, buddy. Oh, okay.
Ding. <lacht>